Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Winston's Weekly covering all things property. I am Peter Milios, your host for today's property chat. Welcome back, Winston. Thank you. As always, let's dive into what's happening in the US equity markets. The month of August ended on a positive note last Friday after the release of the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Report, which aligned with economists' expectations. However, when markets reopened on Tuesday after that long weekend Labor Day weekend, things took a turn for the worse. All three major indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, posted their worst performance since the global sell-off on August 5th. Some underlying factors contributed to the market weakness include US manufacturing data raising concerns about the economy, lingering selling pressure on NVIDIA, negative September seasonality, historically the worst month for stocks over the last decade, and concerns from Goldman Sachs about corporate supply, with expectations of $5 billion worth of new paper hitting the market this week. Winston, how did you view the market this week? What were your key takeaways? Well, markets are, continue to be volatile and uh, they're sort of jumping from one data release to another and reacting uh, accordingly. So there, there's still a lot of uncertainty, still waiting for um, some indication of uh, rate cuts uh, in the US uh, later on this month, which the market is pretty well priced in, at least uh, 75 basis points through to the end of the year. Um, with three cuts of 20, 25 basis points each. Um, so, so the data is a little bit, has been a little bit confusing in terms of where the economy is going. There was concerns about the economy going into recession and then not going into recession and, and markets are reacting accordingly. And shifting to the domestic markets, this week the Australian dollar fell, fell sharply following that weaker than expected US manufacturing data and the release of Australia's GDP figures. The Australian economy grew by just 0.2% in the second quarter, slightly below market forecasts, but in line with the RBA's efforts to slow the economy and curb inflation. What's your latest take on Australia's figures? Um, and what do they tell us about the state of the broader economy and the RBA policies? Well, it's interesting because um, the, the governor also uh, gave a speech uh, yesterday and there was some, uh, some issues sort of taken with that speech in that she said that... Um, there's, there's no possibility of rate cuts basically through to the end of this year. Um, and uh, I think that's, that makes them at a bit of a lock ahead with, with the government who are looking and hoping for uh, the RBA to cut rates. Look, the data that came out, certainly the economy is slowing down. But as, uh, as, as Governor Bullock said, effectively, whilst we need to see that reflected in the inflation numbers and we're not seeing that. Australia's inflation rate is still stubbornly high compared to uh, other economies, certainly the US and, uh, and Europe, and it's not trending down. So even though the economy uh, from, a, from a, a gross domestic product point of view is slowing down, it's not showing in the inflation numbers, and that's their concern. So um, now expectations are that rate cuts won't come until February next year. Um, and uh, people have to deal with that as is. Spending needs to be cut back. Yep. And of course, you've got a situation where the government is actually um, throwing money at the economy, uh, whereas uh, the RBA is saying, you know, we, shouldn't need, we, we need to slow down. And let's dive into the rate market. Morgan Stanley this week released a note suggesting a downturn in commercial property values might be nearing its end, particularly in the industrial and retail property sectors. Uh, they pointed out that cap rates for these sectors have returned to those long-term averages relative to the Aussie 10-year bond rate. What's your take on Morgan Stanley's view? Well, again, let's go back to, to the level of interest rates, which have an impact on, um, on, on cap rates. We are at the end of the interest rate rise cycle. So we're, we're close to the situation where rates will be coming down. Until such time as we actually get those rate cuts, valuations uh, will will be impacted by that in the meantime. Now, um, I, 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 I do agree to some extent that certainly in terms of retail and industrial, yep. um, we, we're pretty well at the bottom, but I don't think that's the case in the office market. Um, the office has still got quite a number of, of issues to overcome. Um, uh, uh, particularly at the lower end of, 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 of the quality space. Uh, 
Uh, working from home is still uh, uh, an issue. We haven't got everybody coming in. Um, so I think office valuations could could go a little bit lower. And w in, in which case, say, in the December results, uh, announcements when they're made by the, by the REITs, that will be the bottom then. So obviously we've been talking about the working from home culture. That's arisen from COVID. Uh, will we ever see a shift back where companies... It offices, regardless of the quality, go back to um, that full five-day working week? Personally, I don't think it's, it's something that uh, the working person is going to accept. Um, I think it'll be a, like a hybrid or a mixture. It'll be yep. three days a week in the office or maybe four days a week. Mm -hmm. um, but it's certainly, it, it's very unlikely, even though, I mean, the government has mandated, for example, that the New South Wales government that um, uh, their workers need to come in five days a week, but it's got to be translated into actually happening. Yep. And I don't think it is. And you spoke about quality. Um, what differs a good quality office valuation or office property from a, a less lesser quality um, property? Well, the, the, it's about offering things to um, the tenants that they, they like and they want. For example, end of trip facilities. Um, showers, yeah. uh, easier parking, I suppose, yep. uh, and, and a more modern building in terms of uh, making sure the air conditioning is working, all those sorts of little things that add up to, um, to making it a, a, a better proposition for someone to come into the office. They want to come into the office rather than work from home. Okay, thank you. Uh, and looking more broadly, how did REITs perform this week? Well, the, the REITs are actually doing pretty well. Um, there was also an announcement um, yesterday that a couple of stocks uh, or property-related stocks are going into a global index, which has kicked them, uh, kicked them up. Uh, they don't come in until September the 20th, but nevertheless, the buying has occurred. Charter Hall and Next DC. Yep. Um, Charter Hall is, is, is a fund manager, um, exposure to pretty well all the property um, asset classes uh, but not residential. And next DC is primarily data centres. And of course, we had the good news uh, or the news this week also that uh, air trunks being sold for a, a big price. Um, data centres there are being valued uh, quite well. Um, and also that's had a bit of a, a rub off on, on next DC. Um, other than that, look, the sector's been okay. That you know We're now at the end, we've finished the reporting period. Um, of course, a number of stocks will go X distributions uh, at the end of this month in September. Um, and uh, so the sector's looking okay at this stage. So obviously da data centres is a hot topic at the moment. It is. Um, will we see more rates, uh, obviously in industrial space, shift towards that, that sector? Well, like it, the Goodman Group. Yeah, well, uh, it's good you mentioned Goodman Group because they have indicated at, at the last result that uh, they are focusing more on, on provision of data centres. The thing about data centres is that uh, they need to have access to power. Yep. And so uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the risks that are looking into that space are, are, are trying to, 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 to get the, the access to power to enable them to, 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 to develop the, the data centres. It's expensive as well. It is expensive, but, and that's why they're making lock-in contracts at, at a certain price. Um, it's, it's better for them. And just shifting on to next week, what are we looking forward to? Uh, not a lot of news next week. Uh, steady as she goes, I guess. As I said, um, maybe there's, there's been some um, likely repositioning. Um, what's happened, even though the Goodman result was, was quite good, was that uh, given the very strong performance over the last 12 months, um, Goodman's has been sort of has come back, has underperformed uh, as money shifts into um, uh, other sectors which are considered to have value. Winston, thanks for your time today. Uh, we'll be back with another Winston's Weekly next Friday. Until then, have a great weekend. Thank you.